<laughs> Good morning guys, what a beautiful day it is here in Umbud. Welcome to Matt Bayeski YouTube channel. This is <clears throat> a typical uh, Balinese area where there's lots of artifacts everywhere. Do you want to have a look? I'll show you. Lots of artifacts. How's that then? Antiquities and a beautiful place for me to meditate this morning. Um, besides the most magnificent, majestic tree. Isn't that gorgeous? I wanted to show you. And um, it's really peaceful. It's nice and early now. Um, I'm about to do some meditation. Um, I got up very, very early this morning, found myself this place. And when I've switched off, I'm going to do some meditation. Like my mushrooms. <laughs> uh, slightly crazy, right? I am. Yeah, I am a little bit. Anyway, can you hear the beautiful birds? Such a beautiful day today, guys. It really is. It's really interesting because over these past few weeks I've been here, I've been observing something so profound. And it's the people, the people who live here, the people who were born here they're in tune with the energy here and the energy on this island is very peaceful and they're all peaceful they're, there's no erratic uh, drivers there's no fighting I haven't seen anybody raise their voice it's complete and utter respect for one another if we could take this in, as an example and put it and apply it in every country in the world it would be amazing why is it that this place here, this is how I think, why is it that the people here are so beautiful and so calm and there's no, I mean, I haven't seen it. I mean, back in the UK where I live, I can be there three days and there's fighting on the streets, there's arguing. Yes, alcohol plays a massive part in that. But I'm talking about from day to day, people bumping into each other, cars beeping at each other, people wanting to rip somebody's head off because they've cut them up here. You get on a motorbike and the beeping, beep beep, it's just to say, hey, I'm behind you, or hey, I'm here, R rather than in England where you beep, you're angry, and then there's nearly violence. So it's such a contrast of living. And you ask me why I love it here. That's one of the reasons, but there's so many more. Bali is a, a really, really beautiful place, a beautiful energy. You feel at peace. There's no fighting. There's no arguing. There's no you've got all the time in the world to find yourself and that leads nicely on today's subject finding yourself and I want to start by saying I think we all set off on a journey to find ourselves from the moment we are aware of who we are I was watching a boy today as I was uh, riding on my bike and he was staring into the water of a little stream and I looked at him and I thought, that was me when I was a little kid. I used to daydream all the time. And the daydreams I had were often very different from other kids. And the way I used to see things in life was probably very different because my life was more about love. And predominantly love is, is what I am and who I am. And I think we all are. But because of our conditioning and how we've been brought up as children, I think we are very individual in the way we are, but I think <clears throat> my sensitivity um, always got the better of me. Um, so whenever I ended up, whenever a kid punched me, or I got kneed in the leg, or something happened that somebody did something that I didn't, I didn't feel was right, because I, as a ch as a child, you know what's right and wrong. You know whether you're doing something right or you're doing something wrong. You know whether you're being mischievous or you're being, you know, damn right, you shouldn't do it. So for me, I, th I think I spent a lot of time questioning all the time. And as you know me now over the two years, this is these are the conversations. They're basically all about questions. And I question my life all the time. And I don't think there's anything wrong with questioning to a degree. However, you can over question, you can over analyze, and that's where it becomes a little dangerous. And I think we need to find the balance in that. 
So going back to um, sensitivity as well, um, that's something a lot of us hold within us. Some, some of us are oversensitive, right? And some of us just don't seem to have that much sensitivity. And it's a real struggle for people who are sensitives like you and I, because we like go, why, why are people doing that? And it is a challenge. But <clears throat> I've come to realize as I've grown up in the, the energy of spirituality is that each one of us who come into this world have a different level of energy. And over the years, I've looked at this and I've put it into some sort of understandable way, which I see as 12 levels of awareness. Um, it's something I'm writing about and I don't believe in categorizing and, and one level or two level, but it's the only way I can share it. If I was to share it with you and you are spiritual and you understand what energy is, you feel energy, basically means that when you're with 12 people, you stand with them, you talk to them, you feel them, you'll say, who do you feel most connected with and who do you feel not? And you'll say, well, that person's not very nice because they said that to me. That person's okay. That person's, uh, you know, not, not, I, I could have dinner with that person and have a chat. And that person's probably really strong. And, uh, and that person's really quite nice. And that person's amazing. And I think that's how I see it, but on a different level. Not on the level that you're judging people because whether they fit into your uh, box and whether you feel they're nice. I'm talking about feeling their power. And if you've ever been around certain people in this world, some people, not many, but some people, you can think, oh my God, there is something so unique and profound about this person's energy. Not what they're saying, but their energy. So I remember going to see um, uh, uh, Babaji Gurinda Singh, and um, he just admits this energy without saying a word. And um, that's, that's quite amazing. And I believe there's a few other people in the world that do that. So I think many of us are on that uh, level of, a, of awareness or, or energy. And I think a lot of that is learning how to clear away the fear that we all hold. So if you and I are holding fear from day to day, that lowers that energy that we kick out and become powerful. And you've often heard me, sorry, I'm going off on a tangent here, but you bear with me, you'll understand as I go along because normally it comes out, the right things come out. So <clears throat> if you're wondering <laughs> what level of uh, awareness and power, uh, what you admit to people around you, I think the best way to measure that is ask yourself, what are your biggest fears? What are your weaknesses? What is it from day to day that really upset you and make you feel sad and worry you? All of those things, when you write them down, are that which I look upon the guy, Gurinder Singh, and thought, wow, powerful energy. That if you wanna to get to that kind of energy, because you can, you have to learn to overcome all of those fears. Now, it's not easy. It, it, nobody ever said this is easy. I work on that daily and I slip. Yesterday I slipped again and I slip every day. And you know what? It's okay to slip. It's okay to think, oh God, I'm still not getting anywhere. It's okay because as you're aware of this slipping, as you become aware of how um, you're feeling and that feeling isn't really positive you know and you're feeling a little negative and oh my god that's good because the more you become aware of it the more you're able to at least uh, accept it and try and work on it imagine if you never see what's wrong with you my father never understood what was wrong with him he never saw it so he was the man that he was until the day he moved into the light so thank you that i can recognize my weaknesses at least it's a start for us to grow stronger and it isn't a race it isn't about fixing it now it's about experiencing it feeling it and going through all the emotions and questioning yourself why are these things happening to me and eventually you will come to an understanding and then look back because there's a lot of things I've overcome over many, many situations. Um, hello, beautiful. I've never met you before, but it's nice to see you, whoever you are. <laughs> Where have you come from? 
Oh, you are beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, sorry about that. I don't know who he is. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, I think there's many levels that we are working towards. And don't get me wrong, just because I mentioned Gurunder Singh doesn't mean that I haven't met certain people. I have met people who are what you would call me and you, the, the ordinary folk, who are amazingly powerful people. And uh, they've left um, uh, a memory in me that I'll never forget. And I'm, I'm not gonna say names, but there is a, at least 10 people that I can think of now who left a major mark in my life. And that mark was their uh, deep power. Um, and that light that I keep telling you about. You know, you keep asking me, when will I find love? When will I find a job? Why am I going through this pain? Why do these bad things happen to me? All of these questions I've asked over the years of being in this world. And if I was to sum it up in one, one simple um, analogy, I believe that all the things that you've come into this world to experience, most of them, I reckon, you will only remember as the challenges. So the nice things that you do, giving, sharing, caring, helping people at the extreme moment, you know, all of those things, you'll, you'll forget them. They won't mean anything to you because um, it's like, you know, that was easy. Okay, it's not easy. A lot of people can't do that. Okay, so uh, pat yourself on the back if you're able to do that. Now, here's where you start to think a little bit more deeper and where it becomes more challenging. Um, all the things that you struggle with, you question why, and and you you don't feel you can you can fix it. I'm not strong enough. I can't do this. And all of a sudden, you're building up an energy around you, and that's fear-based. So I can meet you um, as I would do for many years and sit with you and I can feel your fear. And I, then I would give you a, a psychic read, a healing, and then after that you get up and you admit this power and you say, Mac, I've never felt like this before. I feel peace, inner peace, I've never felt right. I say, now hold on to that, hold on to that. And then when you walk out of this door, always be aware if that inner peace disappears. So is it your partner? Is it your work? Is it something that has happened to you that you could be your mum that has taken, that has, that you have suppressed that inner peace by, by fear or a reaction or anger? So I often used to use that and people used to say, oh my God, I've realized what it is now, Mark. It's my boss at work or it's my partner who's making me feel this way. Okay, so now you know what you need to fix or heal to be able to get that peace back. So it's basically, if you want to find your inner peace, if you want to shine your light and you want to find love, you want to find the perfect life, you want to find inner peace, you have to start by finding out what it is that holds you back, what stops you, what stops your light from shining, okay? So for me, what stops my light from shining from time to time is observing um, anger and sadness and, and people's reactions and people's negativity on social media, okay? So I pulled away from that. I'm not allowing that to affect me anymore, so I don't go on social media. I make these videos few, switch off, and every now and again, I'll go onto social media to answer um, certain people for certain reasons, for work, for what I'm doing, my book, but I don't interact anymore, maybe 1% at the most now. And now my life is amazing, so I'm becoming stronger. What else makes me weak? My fear of um, losing certain things in my life that I love. And the other thing is my fear of my uh, future, okay? So I fear what I don't see. I fear what, what may happen, which isn't gonna happen. You know what I mean? We worried about maybe losing somebody or losing or, or not this happening or that. You know how that is? It kicks in, it's your mind that's fearing. And it makes you feel a lesser person when you do that. And actually, when you realize that you are amazing and everything that's come into your life is absolutely as it should be, and and instead of fearing what what beauty comes into your life and what, what amazing things happen in your life, we're spending all our time worrying about either losing it or, you know, because we become so attached and we're frightened of losing it. And 
all of those things are basically fear-based. Everything is all around you and you're creating that fear which then dampens your light. So we have to work daily on letting those feelings go. So you would ask me, but how do I let go of them, them fears? And I would say to you, the simple way I do it, and it is simple, but it can be challenging when your mind starts kicking in, the monkey mind. You have to keep saying these words. Everything that's happened to me in my life now is exactly as it should be. Everything that's coming into my life is exactly, and everything that's going to go is exactly as it should be for my higher um, spiritual path, whether it's friendships, whether it's love, whether it's uh, jobs, whether it's whatever your day-to-day -day living, it's all as it should be. So we fight against that. You and I fight against that all the time. We either frightened of losing it, or, or we, we we need to get rid of it, or we're always in conflict. We're always always in conflict. So I found this place here, and I'm now not as much in conflict. But what I wasn't much in conflict of then, and it's gone now. Other things come in now. So I think we're always. Um, we've always got this mindset that we have to be worried or fear all the time something and we have to try and learn to clear that away hello beautiful so I think that's what it is guys hello 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 I don't know who you are but I love you I love you say hello I make you famous I make you famous wave wave say who are you, who are you talking to hello say hello 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 say hello to camera Say hello to everybody. Oh, it's so beautiful. It's a heat. Okay, guys. So that's it, really. Um, I want to leave you on one note on this beautiful uh, morning in Ubud. And it is something that always helps me as it does day to day. And it's the most powerful few words that I've ever used that heal any given situation, whether it's somebody who's attacking me, whether it's uh, my fears, whether um, whatever it is, it always helps. So this is what I do, okay? I sit and by the tree is perfect. Get myself comfortable. You don't, it doesn't matter if you're crossed legs or not. It doesn't matter however you feel comfortable. Just relax your eyes and just breathe. Allow the sounds around you to be part of your life. Don't worry what you hear. It's all good. And now I want you to raise your left hand or your right hand onto your chest, right in the center of your chest where your heart is. And then rest your other hand on your head. And now say these words but mean them. No one has the power over me. Repeat. No one has the power over me. Think about the words as you say them. No one has the power over me. This is not ego talking. This is your inner power talking. No one has the power over me. You are clearing your mind of the doubts and the fears of the little tiny man in there telling you that you're not good enough. Or woman inside your mind, the little demon I call it, no one has the power over me. Keep repeating it, no one has the power over me. No one has the power over me. Okay, gently put your hand down, open your eyes. Now, do that as often as you can and you will find yourself in a beautiful place because the truth is, no one, no one has the power over you unless you let them. So today, let's do this together. Let no one have the power over us and let's bring this light out and let's shine our light to the world so people can feel us and say, hey, I really like you. Do you want to do this with me? Do you want to work with me? Do you want to go out with me? Do you want to do this? Do you want to do that? So there's our secret. Let's shine our light today and clear the worries and fears. So from a beautiful abode, from a, a most majestic tree, from a beautiful setting, I hope today made a little bit of sense to you. 
I want to thank everybody from the bottom of my heart who has gone to markbayeski.com and purchased another crystal last night. I woke up, well, Moldavites, you're loving them, and thank you for your messages. By the way, every one of you who are sending me messages about Moldavites saying, could you tell me this and that, I am writing it all down in a book, Q&As. So keep the questions coming about Moldavites because I'm still writing, even today, about Moldavite. And um, do you want to know what chapter is today? Where I believe Moldavite came from and where and what it was before it uh, broke up into the atmosphere and came to us. It's a very interesting subject. Many people um, believe many different things, like it came from a spaceship and this and that. It was a spaceship originally, and da -da. but I have my own uh, feelings to it via what I've connected with it. So, interesting. So yeah, thank you so, so much. I see that tactites are going like crazy and so many crystals now are going out. You realize and appreciate how powerful a crystal is and how it can change your life for you to feel things that you've never felt before. Welcome to my world. It is a beautiful world indeed. That's why I go hunting for them every day. Um, so thanks guys, I really appreciate that. I really do from the bottom of my heart. And I hope you've got something today from this gobbledygook because that's exactly what it was, <laughs> right? Okay, take care till tomorrow. See you soon.